Hello, everybody. Uh, we'll, start, we'll start this session, uh, an English session. Daniele will be happy. <laughs> um, and Philip Walton as well, if he's there. <laughs> oh, there, yeah, not far. Um, so it's an English session. Uh, I apologize, but my, uh, I speak Deutsch, but I'm a bit. I'm French speaking, coming from Brussels. And I also speak English, obviously, and Dutch. So thanks to Dutch, uh, I can grasp a lot of the sessions, in G even in German, but to be too, really too difficult to, 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 to speak in German. So um, when, I, when I first wrote this, this, it was, as always, for all my presentations, it always starts with personal notes for myself. Like uh, I had a little list of 10... 10 little extensions that I like, which were only on GitHub, not on the Joomla extensions directory. And then I thought, ah, I should share it. And then I thought, okay, if I share it, then I should add a few more. Uh, so it started with 10, then it was 30, 40. Then I had a list of 40 when I submitted a session for the uh, Joomla day back. But I said, okay, I will write 50 in the title because in between maybe I will have 50. And now I think I have 65 or something. So, uh, and the goal, the goal is, is to go even further. So if you, because I cannot know everything. So if you know of other little nice extensions out there on GitHub, which are uh, not so uh, well known, just, just share it with me after the session or drop me an email and I will be happy to, to add it here. Um, the slides are available on, on slides.woluep.be, just like all the other presentations. Um, and so, uh, of course, I'm always very happy to, to, um, to pay developers for uh, professional extensions and everything, but there are really little gems out there, open source, free, whatever, uh, which deserve uh, to, uh, to be known. And so I wanted to, to share those. Uh, so most of them are free and open source. Uh, here and there, I had to mention some some, some major ones, which you will find on the JET, on the Joomla extensions directory. But it was not the goal to to give you my list of the best extensions on the JET. Uh, it was more the idea of finding uh, less known things, which are still very useful. So I've made. Uh, Nine categories, because I started to have too many um, extensions. So we have uh, the media, everything about the media manager, then SEO and open graph, then things about custom fields, things about the editor, uh, tiny MC, etc. things about content, about administration, about uh, additional features in Joomla, uh, section about uh, to, to learn more, and then even beyond Joomla. I love them all, but I have more than 60. So if I if I speak one minute for each, we are uh, uh, people will kill me here. So uh, I will be quite fast because anyway you have the link and you and you can dig. But the idea is that oh yes, that's something I need. Uh, but I added a little heart for the ones which are really special for me. So first section, media manager, um, SVG. So. Um, uh, Vectorial images. Uh, maybe you've noticed if you just drag and drop an SVG image in the Joomla Media Manager, by default it's forbidden. So it's just a little thing you have to change the options to allow SVG. Uh, and so here is a little video uh, where it's explained. So thanks, Brian, for this um, video. Responsive images. Uh, I use this a lot. That's something by Dimitris Grammaticogiannis. Uh, if you have images on a website, uh, thanks to this extension, ex extension, you will have automatically the WebP version, an AVIF version of the same image, and also a source set. So it will resize the images in all sizes so that it will serve to your visitors on the smartphone, the small one. So actually, you don't even care anymore about explaining to users uh, please first resize, and even if they resize, even if it's 2,000 pixels or 1,000 pixels, it, even that would be too 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 wide for a smartphone. So here um, you get covered. 
Then, something linked to the previous one, um, Dimitris also wrote a command line interface so that you can pre-generate all, uh, all those resized images so that you're not depending on visitors visiting this and that page for those images to be generated for the first time. Um, still Dimitris, there are many from different people, you would see. Um, a different folder for each user in the media manager. In some cases, you, you don't want users to, be, to see everything, to be able to delete anything or to do anything in the media manager. So that's a little plugin allowing to have a unique folder for each user. Um, Alan, I am forever thankful to Alan for, the cus for introducing the custom fees in Joomla 3.7 back then. Uh, but he also has very nice uh, extension uh, from Digital Peak, and this one allows you in the media manager. Normally, you only see the local files, the local images, and thanks to this, you can have more sources. So you can have external sources like something via FTP or Pixabay, Pexels, and other things and extra features like filters uh, in the media manager. Um, if I'm not mistaken, there is a free version and a pro version. Uh, and for example, in the pro version of DP Media, this also allows, because I had that need uh, for some websites, um, to allow PDF for custom fields of type media, because for some reason, actually, actually it should be native in, in core, but uh, if, if you want to have a PDF as a custom fields, even if media is supposed to include PDF, it does not work natively. But so if you need that, uh, you, can, you can use DP Media and it will, it will solve that. Um, the second section is about SEO and Open Graph. I really, 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 really love this one. Uh, generating Open Graph images because there are also excellent paid extensions, right? But I think that this one is even better and it's open source, you can contribute. Uh, so don't hesitate, it's from Crystal. So it generates uh, open graph images. But the nice thing is that it's not just that it would take the intro image, it's, it creates a new image where you can say, I want to take for this category, uh, I want to take the intro image, but on top of it, I want to have the title, and also another image so that my logo is semi-transparent uh, at the bottom right or whatever. So actually it generates a unique image which has much more impact on the social media than just the intro image without text because pe when people are scrolling, if they see the title of the concert or whatever, uh, it, is, it, it has more impact. Uh, so Social Magic by Crystal. Another one, because uh, I still have to mention myself, um, social buttons. So the, th the issue m most of the time with uh, extensions for social sharing is that the code is really heavy and it loads also extra resources and tracking. And, but you don't want that uh, for performance. You don't want that for GDPR. You don't want that for many reasons. So actually, this is just super lightweight, no tracking, no anything, uh, just a little module that you can publish uh, on a fixed position and you have your social icons, sharing buttons. Um, one funny thing, because I've, I've never used WordPress, I'm virgin, and, um, but when I hear WordPress people, they are always so proud, because, yeah, but we have Yoast and blah, blah, blah. There is also Yoast in Joomla and it's free. So I don't know whether it's paid or free in, in WordPress. Um, but uh, so thanks Firecoder for this uh, Route 66 uh, extension. Uh, so Yoast is to, to give you feedback about SEO, right? Uh, okay, it's still about SEO because um, this one is on the jet, for example, but I cannot not mention it because it's an all-in-one tool uh, by Yannick Gaultier uh, from France. It's for SEO. So uh, 
it does it all, I should read. Like the open graph image, uh, but also the structured data, the sitemap, the internal linking, uh, the broken links, the error pages, the redirections, and everything. So, of course, it's a paid extension, but the nice thing is that you have one tool to do everything related with um, SEO. Uh, and also from Yannick, that's free. This is a little add-on that you can have, uh, uh, that Sigrid mentioned yesterday in her session, a little add-on that you can add to your browser, Firefox, Chrome, or whatever, uh, which gives you feedback about SEO. So, like the structured data, is it, is it there? Is it correct and everything? Uh, so, it's, it's very useful. Um, third section, uh, extensions about custom fields. Uh, if you want more types of custom field, uh, you can find even more, but like here, in, in <laughs> with one extension, on top of the 60, 16 native custom field of Joomla, or 17 maybe, um, you have an extra 26 uh, types of custom fields. This is by Tassos, the advanced custom fields. And there is a free version, which is great. Uh, and in the pro version, you have even more. And then for each custom field, you have even more options. Like if it's a uh, YouTube or Vimeo, you can choose the color of the player and is it responsive and blah, blah, blah. Um, but uh, both free and pro versions are really nice. Um, and also, this is maybe for more advanced things, but I wanted to mention, because Tassos, uh, here it's a link to his documentation, you can also have chained fields. So if you have advanced needs, uh, have a look at this. Uh, and also, speaking about advanced cases like uh, inception, right? So if you want uh, subforms within subforms or crazy stuff, uh, these are two links which will uh, be of interest by Nicolas. Um, filtering. This is something that um, uh, I, I miss a bit in Joomla because we have the custom feed and it's probably the best feature since uh, over the last 10 years introduced in Joomla. Uh, but for example, if you go to a menu item of type blog or whatever, um, you cannot order by custom fields, you cannot filter by custom fields or so this extension allows to uh, add filters, or maybe I think filters in the front end. But it's already something, at least there is a filter uh, on custom fields. Uh, and that's another one to sort by custom fields. So this is in the, uh, in the back end. Uh, it adds an extra tab where you can say, oh, instead of ordering by title ascending or date descending, I can order by any custom field uh, ascending or descending. So very handy, uh, especially if you have events or stuff like that where with a custom field start date or of the, for the concert or for the movie, um, really useful. Um, another one by Brian, if you use, uh, if you want to have YouTube, the YouTube Integration code is really heavy because it loads plenty of stuff, tracking again and blah, blah, blah. So this is super uh, light. Uh, it says 224 times faster. <laughs> um, so have a look at this. Uh, this is a tip by uh, Elisa. I, I, sh I should read. The long version is on the HTML version. This is the slide version, so <laughs> it gets cut because uh, I don't have the time to tell everything here. But uh, um, it's something, a plugin made by Elisa, allowing to uh, copy paste the value of a custom field of type date uh, into the creation date so that you can order by creation date, which is actually like uh, sorting by, uh, uh, by a custom field. <laughs> Useful for smart search, yeah. Um, conditional fields, so uh, thanks to the contributors. And here, the link I mentioned is a presentation made uh, last, last week by uh, Olivier, uh, explaining the conditional field. Sometimes you have a custom field, and I don't know. Um, 
if if it's beer, then you want to say to have a second custom field to to specify whether it's a lager or a bitter, etc. Or if it's wine, then you want to say red or 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 or, or rosé, etc. Uh, so in the interface, you could say, oh, never mind, we show everything. But for an end user, it's not very nice. So here you can say, uh, thanks to show on. Uh, since the latest version of Joomla, I think, uh, you, you can say, okay, if the first custom field has a value X or Y, and you can make more advanced conditions, then the second custom field will show. Um, now, um, extensions around the editor. Uh, that's a really nice one uh, from Dimitris. Uh, WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. So, if you're in the editor in TinyMCE, typically if you have bootstrap classes in your HTML or, or your user.css, custom.css, it would not be triggered in your editor in the back end. Here, uh, it does what it needs to, uh, to, um, to fetch those uh, CSS classes and, and so that you, you have the rendering uh, in your editor, just like you would have it in the front end for the visitors. Um, also, um, if you want to customize, when you edit an article, there are so many tabs, especially in the back end, also in the front end, so many tabs with so many options uh, that you, you might want to override that. But if you have different categories, maybe sometimes you have custom fields, sometimes you want to display more fields, less fields, and this allows you to have a different override of your edit form for each category uh, in Joomla. Um, still in the idea of facilitating the customization of front-end editing, the previous one I was, I was mentioning supposes that you make an override in PHP of the edit form. Um, here, it's an extension by Peter Jan uh, from the Netherlands, allow, giving you an interface. So in the back end, you can specify, but I think it's global, or maybe it's per category, I don't know. Um, I don't remember. Uh, you can specify, OK, when people edit in front end, I don't need this and that and that and that, so that you have a simplified front end edit form. Uh, then we have here the authors, thanks Sigrid and Peter. Um, we have D2 profile, so for the back end, and there you can do much more than just selecting what you display or not. You can even re reorganize, uh, reorganize your, your whole screen. Uh, so D2 profiles for the back end, and maybe one day for the front end as well. Uh, Another one uh, by Brian. When you edit it in the front end, uh, you don't need to display the modules and the header and blah, blah, blah. So this will simplify your front end so that you only have the editor when you edit and not the rest of the page. Also from Brian, if you use TinyMCE, which I would recommend, um, this is a series of shortcuts uh, within Tiny MCE. Uh, okay, here my explanation is cut, so the long version is in the HTML version of the presentation, um, because that's a need I had. You know, in the in Tiny MCE, you have the standard menus options where you can say, "I want bold," "I want title one," "I want." Uh, the class button, okay, there are predefined menu, but I wanted to have my own sub-menu with own classes so that my end users could use the classes that I created for them. So not the classical one, like the bootstrap one or whatever, which are already integrated, but really uh, totally customized. So here it explains everything, see the HTML, HTML version for the details. Um, but there is a JSON file that you have to put uh, somewhere. Oh yeah, actually, we have everything there. So it was a long discussion back then. Um, customizing further tiny MCE. I don't remember what this one does. <laughs> uh, 
just click on the link and, and have a look, but it gives more options about Tiny MCE. Um, inserting code, yeah, sometimes you, you're explaining and you're making a tutorial or whatever where you want to insert PHP or CSS or HTML to explain, not to uh, trigger, but to um, just to display. So this little extension by André allows precisely that to insert directly the code, which will have uh, syntax highlighting and, and everything. Now, fifth category, uh, content. Uh, translation with Deeple, another extension by uh, Peter Jan, uh, allowing to have Deeple, that's very handy. Uh, you, you just connect it with your Deeple account then you can say whether you want to have all languages or only the languages available on your website, like in Belgium, typically French, Dutch, English, okay, uh, and German. Um, and then in each article, when you're in the editor, you can just say translate. You click on the button and it translates using directly the API of Deeple. So it's very fast when you have a multilingual website uh, to to get everything translated. Also, um, in the same idea of having an extra button <laughs> in the editor, ChatGPT uh, by Rick Spahn, uh, so directly in your um, in your editor. And another one. Allow oh yeah, I, I use this one um, a lot by Joomla Shack. OS content, when I build a website, so this is not automatic, but it's an interface. If I, if I have to build, to add 10 articles or 20 articles and specify uh, different things and type the title and creating and create the corresponding menu item, it can take a lot of time if you do it manually. Here on one page, you can create those 10 or 20 articles and say automatically that it should create a menu item in this menu uh, as a child of this menu item, et cetera, et cetera, with different options. So it makes uh, website creation faster. Um, that's uh, a commercial for the next session of this afternoon <laughs> that, I, that, I, that I present about um, creating articles from directly from a Google Sheet. So I have this use case where I have a Google Sheet with three, almost 3,000 films more than 16 custom fees, like uh, director, duration of the film, blah, blah, blah. I just click on one button and it imports or synchronizes everything in Joomla. So this is a session for this uh, afternoon. It was a script made together with uh, Alexandre Elysée using the Joomla API, which, we, which is, was a new feature of Joomla 4. Uh, another tool, if you want to create articles from a CSV file, is from uh, Alec, it's called CFI, so uh, just give it a try, so it's a more simple use case. Uh, also, another way to create articles directly from the front end, you can use a uh, Tassos extension called uh, Convert Forms, and since, uh, I don't know, six months or something, there is a possibility to, uh, thanks to webhooks, to call the Joomla API, so actually I could have a convert form on site A, which would create an article on site B, or on site A, of course, but uh, using the Joomla API and using convert forms uh, webhooks. Uh, and speaking about importing, I have to mention this because it's the Rolls-Royce uh, about importing, uh, exporting or importing in Joomla by Roland. Uh, it is R-O-C-S-V-I, so if you really have a big need about importing or exporting, of course, this is the, uh, the major one. And for example, um, Elisa also shared her experience. It was mentioned yesterday. She wanted to export, everybody wants to do that, export uh, <laughs> content from WordPress and import it in, in Joomla. So, um, that's a query to run on the WordPress database, and then she could import it with ROCSVI. Um, also, another one. Um, yeah, sometimes I add the, the the moment I added this because I was saying in this session I had thirty, then forty, then 
50, 60 plus extensions. So some people have already attended the session, but there are re regular additions. So this is why sometimes I mention the date I added. And this was added today. Um, well, yesterday after the bees. Um, <laughs> If you want to create, uh, but there is also a session about that. It's today, right? This afternoon. Uh, if you want to create automated lorem ipsum articles, categories, menu items, and everything, you can do it directly from the console. Um, but please attend uh, Peter's session this afternoon. Another section is administration. That's a great one, again, by Yannick Gaultier. Um, it's uh, free. It's uh, four logs, so it's a plugin you install, and instead of having via FTP and edit your log files, sometimes you have to do a new debug or you want to understand something, uh, you have it from the back end. It's so easy. Um, a task list, so if you have a to-do list that you want to have in the back end, that's an extension from Brian. Uh, oh, I love this one, because it never happens to me to to have the padlock, to have the lock on an article, because I know that if I'm editing, either I close, either I save. I don't click on the back button of the browser, I don't close the browser, I don't leave it alone for one day so that it would be timed at or whatever. But in real life, end users do that. Um, so especially if, if they edit from the front end, if they are editing from the back end, they have the padlock, they can click on it to unlock it. Okay, so it's not uh, the end of the world. But especially if they edit from the front end, it's just locked, they cannot unlock it. So this task scheduler, it will be in core in 5.0. So just wait one month. No, if you can't wait, if you can't wait, <laughs> install it now. Otherwise, um, but thanks Tobias anyway, I don't know if it's, all right. Um, administration dashboard. So if you want customized button uh, in, in, in the back end for your end user so that they have like shortcuts to what they need the most and everything, that's uh, Yannick, another one, Yannick Berges, uh, who, who has this uh, module for the back end. Um, impersonation. I've never used this one because I discovered it quite recently. Um, if you want to impersonate another user, uh, this uh, would allow that. It works well? Yeah? Okay. Uh, Joomla Downloader. Uh, I knew it was there, but I had never tried. And it's so easy. You just drop the little file at the root of a server when you want to install a new Joomla 4.5 stable, beta, whatever. You get an interface, you click, and it fetches the, the latest version or the version you, you asked. It unzips it, and you're ready to go. So you don't even have to bother to, to download or um, uh, your, by yourself. And with a very clean interface, so it's not uh, it's comfortable. Uh, additional features. Uh, a powerful commenting system. Uh, there are many commenting systems, uh, even on the JED. Uh, many paid commenting systems are, uh, are worth less than, than, than this free open source uh, engage uh, extension by, by Nicolas. It's very powerful, very much in the logic of Joomla that it, it cascades, that you can say, for this category, using the ACL, for this category allowed, for this uh, subcategory not, and blah, blah, blah. Um, sometimes, many times, uh, you make a change in CSS in your custom.css or user.css, and you know, because you're, <laughs> you're, you're the web agency, that you can force refresh so that in the front end it applies and it fetches the latest version. But then your, your customer says, no, it has not changed. Of course, you have to force refresh. But you cannot explain that to, uh, to the client. And you cannot explain that to, uh, to the public. Because if there are thousands of visitors, you cannot tell visitors, please refresh your cache. Um, so this invalidates uh, the cache so that the visitors get the latest version. 
uh, also from Dimitris. And you will also tell me that this comes into the core with Joomla 5, no? Dark mode in the back end? Yeah? So uh, there is Muta, and it took me one year to understand that Muta was Atom the other way around, um, because it's, it's dark mode. Um, and, and maybe more than dark mode, I, I've not investigated. But uh, And also, if you wanted dark mode for back end, but also for front end, if you're using Cassiopeia or similar templates, you also have uh, another extension by Nicolas. Um, that's an override uh, to, to have cards in, in Joomla, to have another layout uh, for a blog view by Brian. Uh, that's an interesting one. When you have a login menu item, normally it would open a new page, reload, uh, reload the page. And if you want to have the login module in a model, you would get it uh, with this uh, extension by Brian. Uh, this one is great. Um, in, in, in the back end, uh, for any article, you have versioning. So if you save, um, it would remember the last 10 versions of your articles. And in the back end, uh, or no, or even on the well, back end and front end, when you have custom HTML modules, there is no versioning natively in Joomla, unless it comes with Joomla 5, no, <laughs> not this time. And many times it happened to me to make a typo, to delete a paragraph that I should not have deleted and everything. And actually, this little plugin by uh, Rick introduces versioning for the custom HTML module, so very handy. Uh, this you should definitely know because at some point in life you, ha you have to clean the images because after one year or ten years, even more ten years, uh, the Im you have so many images which are not used anymore, which you would like to move, to rename, whatever. So how to deal with orphan images? I have three solutions for you. The first one uh, is an extension uh, by Rick. Uh, so the, um, how is it called? R2H Image Manager. So there you have a complete interface. Uh, it was free for Joomla 3, and in Joomla 4, you only have the paid version. But you have a full interface, meaning that you can drag and drop. No, you, you immediately see with a red flag if the image is not used anywhere, with a green flag if it's used. So it's quite visual. You can immediately delete the images that you don't need anymore. And if you want to move images or rename images, you do it live in that media manager, and it will adapt everything in the corresponding articles, calling the art, calling the image, uh, etc. So that's very visual because it's an interface. Another solution is a PHP script uh, by Guido, and there is a Joomla 3 version, Joomla 4 version, uh, and it would uh, get rid of unused images and rename the files to um, uh, and put them somewhere, if I remember correctly. Uh, so that's another solution. And a third solution is a script by uh, René Kreveld. Um, so it's a bash script, which also identifies the uh, orphan, uh, the unused images. Something else now. Um, if, if you use Bootstrap in Joomla 4, suppose you're using Cassiopeia and you want to have a slideshow or an accordion, the whole Bootstrap uh, JavaScript, for example, and, and corresponding CSS classes, are there sleeping in Joomla, but they are available, but you want performant websites, so it's not triggered by default. You, if, you want, if you need a slideshow and accordion using the bootstrap, JavaScript, and everything, you should just uh, wake the part you need, w wake it up. So uh, this is what uh, a link to some explanation by Dimitris. Um, if you want a graphical user interface to export your child templates, because maybe you made a child template for a given website and you want to install it on another website. Uh, this is a little um, tool from Dimitris allowing to do that. Uh, that's a funny one, colors.joomla.com by Elisa there. Um, 
if you if you want to uh, generate your uh, a color set a color scheme for your Cassiopeia, uh, it allows you to do it very nicely uh, directly from from a, a front end. Um, export your Joomla articles to Markdown. I don't know why you would want to export your Joomla. I understand why you would import J WordPress articles, but I don't know why you would want to export Joomla articles. Um, oh yeah, for example. Um, but this is a tool by Dimitris to export to Markdown. Um, that's another extension by uh, 024 which is an advanced version of the redirection plugin uh, component in Joomla. So I've not totally understood yet what it allows to do as, yeah? Um, okay. Okay, and so this is part of, of, of this, what you're saying. Okay, because I, I could read the description, but I was not sure of the use case or so. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, so useful. Um, learn more. Um, so, different sources if you want to learn more about Joomla. Uh, there is a book that Luca uh, from Italy uh, published last year, which is available uh, from different sources. Uh, a paperback version, or a P including a PDF version. For extension development, there is this online book by Nicholas that you should definitely read. Um, also, another one by Astrid, 550 pages about to learn developing extensions, uh, available for free in PDF format. Um, learn Joomla 4. Uh, Brian, w when Joomla 4 was released, Brian, Brian started uh, a little series of 13 videos with little tips and tricks, and I was so happy back then to learn those little things uh, about Joomla 4. So it is still there. Um, another source is Basic Joomla. There you have hundreds of videos. So uh, uh, sometimes he invites, he would invite uh, a developer presenting uh, her or his extension, or sometimes it would be just a live session where he tries to solve something during two hours. So if uh, uh, you have different types of uh, sessions. Um, Another one, creating Joomla content plugins with examples uh, by Kevin. Uh, another one by Astrid. Uh, yeah, and with many things about Cassiopeia, like adding local fonts to your template and uh, etc. It's available both in English and in German, um, by the way. Another one by Cedric uh, from France. So there is an English and a French version in this case. Uh, it's, a, it's a book uh, for 16 euro learning templates. Um, about the Cassiopeia template, I had made a presentation gathering plenty of information about configuring playing with Cassiopeia. So uh, have a look at that if you also use Cassiopeia. And then that's a new section I added uh, very recently. Uh, after the AC mailing, AK mailing uh, hack, because many people were looking for solutions to uh, to find whether there were the suspicious files or not. So this is uh, okay if you're an expert of the console and use SSH and everything, you are served. But not everybody can do that, so uh, is able to do that, uh, has the knowledge to do that. So. This is a little script, a PHP file that you put somewhere on your website, you open it in the browser, and you have a little interface where you say, okay, I am searching for this word in all files, uh, .css or .php or whatever. And so it's a, it's a grep uh, tool, but from, from a little script that you can just drag and drop and then uh, call from the browser. 
uh, made by Christoph, who is the founder of my local Joomla user group. Um, and um, back then, but he has updated it after this uh, AC mailing story. Um, he has updated this tool, which is free, uh, which is an analysis tool, audit tool of your website. So I'm not saying it's perfect. It's, it's a free tool that he made uh, back then and he updated it. So he whitelists all the Joomla official uh, files from every single version since uh, Joomla, I don't know, uh, 1.5. So, so that at least it does not have to analyze those files which are perfectly fine. It, it will only analyze third-party extensions and, and hacked files. Uh, by definition, and so at least you will have a first view of suspicious, suspicious files uh, on your website. And so this is it, and if you have any other suggestions of other nice tools uh, available out there, just tell me. Thank you. And if you already knew every single link that I mentioned, uh, the <laughs> Joomla data pays back your entry. <laughs> and I and I <laughs> no, and I pay you a beer. <laughs> <laughs>